folks. We're in 1980s land here. I'll just quiet that down. This is my Kramer Pacer, which uh, I bought in the spring of 2023 and has been my gigging guitar all season. And it's not just been one that started every gig, it has started, played every song and finished every gig. And we're doing usually 38 to 40 songs in a gig. Playing mainly that 80s heavy rock, think Motley Crue, Ozzy Osbourne, Poison, Van Halen, some Bon Jovi, some Guns N' Roses, some earlier Judas Priest, we throw in some Deep Purple and some Thin Lizzy, some Gary Moore stuff, you know the kind of thing, some Chicken Foots in there as well. <clears throat> All very kind of 80s riff orientated fun rock. And this guitar I bought partly because of the look and I thought yeah that, that fits the the genre that fits the band so um, I ordered this and then I was quite taken with everything else about it now I did do my research as you always should so this thing appealed partly because of the hardware on it which for the price now these retail around 600 euros the spec on this is absolutely off the chart for a, a branded guitar. I know you do get, you know, the Harley Bentons and the likes, which are excellent guitars, and they come with, you know, very good spec. However, Kramer. Kramer, obviously huge in the early 80s, mid 80s. And this came out around 1984, I reckon. And the design with the tiger stripes Rumour has it was it was designed for George Lynch from Dokken. However, he then went on to um, ESP. You might have seen Ross Parrish Satchel from Steel Panther playing one of these again before he went to Charvel and he kept the Tiger Stripes. I, I do like the Tiger Stripes and they, they work really well on stage. They look fantastic under lighting. <clears throat> anyway, hardware. It's a 1000 series Floyd Rose Tremolo. Now the 1000 series isn't entry level at all, it's further up, it's a sort of pro level. You get them in my Jackson SL2Q Pro which comes in at around, they're over a thousand euros now, I know they're sometimes sniffing around 1200 euros, 1200. So to get that in this guitar you think, well, wow that's, that's a bit of a steal. Ah, so where are they cutting the corners? Well, they are not cutting corners on the pickups. Because those pickups are genuine American made Seymour Duncans. You have a JB in the bridge, which for me is the quintessential rock 80s pickup humbucker. It's a fantastic one. It's got plenty mid-range punch. It's not too brittle. Harmonics scream out of this thing. And you've got a jazz in the neck. Now, no, 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 don't get put off by the name jazz. This is a mild, warm, smooth humbucker. It complements this really nicely. And it's fantastic for lead playing. It sings, it really does. Now, the body in this is all maple, which is a bit unusual. And it makes it quite a weighty lump of a guitar. It's not a lightweight thing. It's not like the Ivan is basswood, basswood. Um, it's heavier than the older ones. It's um, on par with my Jackson Soloist, which is a mahogany body. It's on par with that. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's got a bit of chunk to it. Now, the neck, again, all maple. And it's not like an Ivan is wizard neck. It's not like the Jackson neck. I would say this is closer to the EVH Wolfgang neck. It's fairly flat, especially further down, if you get down here, but it's got a bit of a shape to it, a bit of roundness. Um, I'm not going to go into you know, shallow C's or deep D's or deep C's or whatever. It, it's almost like a strat neck. It's very similar to a really nice strat neck 
Very comfortable for cords. I would say a fraction wider at the nut than the EVH is. But in overall dimensions, it's very, very similar. So if you're used to playing something like a Strat or an EVH or a Charvel, you will find this neck really easy to adjust to. You're, you're at home. I've got this uh, always tuned to D, so if you hear things in D, that's, that's why. Um, it comes with the bit of tension there because the, the headstock is not raked back. It doesn't add string tension like an Ibanez or a Jackson. And um, own brand tuning pegs, but they work really well. Good locking nut, again matching the 1000 series trim. And the thing that was a nice touch, and it did take me back to when I was uh, playing it in the, the very early 90s. It used to be quite a standard thing. In fact, I used to have a Jackson with it as well. They come with the Allen keys bolted on the back. And I don't even think about it, but it's a handy thing to have. Now, I tend to take a multi-tool with me to gigs. Uh, those little Ibanez ones, they're, they're really, really good. However, this, having those in the back, is a nice little fail-safe because you know at some point you're going to forget and then you need to do some work and you're like, oh, has anyone got an Allen key? So, they come with it. The neck isn't super shiny, it's a uh, slight satin. Um, I've gave this a very gentle rub down just to make it closer to the EVH with you know, a bit more of a natural wood finish, um, but not enough to actually change the profile at all, just literally a, a dusting. Um, the neck joint is the standard four bolt square joint. Now, compared to what's on some of the Ibanez or the Jacksons these days, it looks a little bit clumpy, but it's really not a problem. Your access up to the 22nd fret, 22 frets in this, is uh, no problem. So yeah, if you're playing solos up there all day, you're, you're okay. It's not as comfy as going for a 24 fret Ibanez and having two spare frets or a 30 fret Ibanez as I once had. However, I love this guitar for singing and playing. And this is where I'm going with a lot of my choices these days. It's maybe not a full shred metal guitar, like modern metal. It, it's a, you know, it's a 1984 designed guitar. I was nine when this came out. So, yeah, it, it's not designed for modern genty metal. This came out right in the start of the big hair era. You know, Motley Crue were out, Van Halen were out, Quiet Riot, that kind of that kind of thing and it really is a super strat and it's a quintessential super strat now with the pickups I'm going to go all the way back to the pickups we have two volume pots we'll see if you can see them in the tiger stripes we've got bridge neck and a tone pot and you have a very small you can hardly see it bring it up there we go, a little three-way switch. So you think automatically, bridge, both, neck. However, the two volume pots also have a push-pull function. And that allows for, it's not coil splitting or coil tapping in this, it's like a phase reversal. So think of Kirk Hammett's and Gary Moore's and Peter Green's Greeny um, Les Paul they're, they're all over the internet just now it does that turning a humbucker phase reversing it and it sounds a bit more strat like so that's where they're going with the pickups which gives this a huge amount of tonal choice especially if you think if I'm in the bridge position I've got humbucker or I've got the phase reverse. In the neck position I also have humbucker and phase reverse. However in the middle I have two humbuckers or I can have one humbucker 
like neck humbucker and bridge phase reversed or bridge humbucker and neck phase reversed or both phase reversed or neither phase reversed so you've got like four options there the jack socket I'll come to straight away is as you see right below it it's not to the side and I was a little bit skeptical at first thinking oh, where this is gonna sit funny it's gonna get in the way it doesn't it, it sits far enough back behind your leg if you're sitting down that it's fine when you're gigging you it's never a problem never an issue and I would always say if you're you know rehearsing at home even play standing up that's how you're going to perform so there's no point sitting you know work out the stuff you're doing yes get it right stand up and always make sure a guitar works for you make sure it hangs properly and it balances and this balances really well there's absolutely no neck dive when you're playing it so sounds I'm going to go very 80s with this no reverbs no delays actually because I'm actually going to use for once the Jet City um, the Jet City GCE 50 is actually a clone of the Soldano Hot Rod 50 and we've got Soldanos everywhere just now with their new Astro, Astral, whatever. Lovely sounding amp, but big money. That was 200 euros. I've got a video on that. Um, so if you're after Soldano tones, but not Soldano prices, have a look for the Jet City JCA50. Um, they do a JCA100, or they did, and they do a 22 watt version as well. All using the Soldano Hot Rod system. Now, a circuitry, use the right words would help. The lead channel in this is essentially the Soldano SLO that you all know. So, we don't have the cleanest of clean tones with this. I've set the cleanish channel, the crunch channel, down to as low a gain as I can really get away with. And I will let you hear the bridge pickup in humbucker mode and then I'll coil split and I'll work through and I'll talk you through the sounds. This is much more versatile than the looks suggest. <laughs> Benton which is uh, filled with Celestian vintage 30s pretty standard stuff and the microphone is just the one stuck on top of the camera so nothing special I'll need to look into that okay so both humbuckers together <laughs> and nine times out of ten that's absolutely fine for all your gigging you're doing that that covers those nice kind of that, that kind of thing it covers that nicely neck pickup we're onto just the jazz and it does that nice rich rolling humbucker from the neck sound So that's your three basic sounds that you're normally going to have. So I'll coil, not coil split, phase split, phase reverse, however you want to call it. I'll keep calling it coil splitting or coil tapping because that's what I end up doing. Anyway, humbucker, neck humbucker. You hear the low end drop out and a bit of the mid range drops out.
So a bit, a bit more single coil sounding, a little bit spankier. So you Quite nice for that. Okay, into the middle position where I've got both humbuckers. Uh, you heard? There we go. Now, if you find that's a little bit low frequency, a bit boomy, you can always phase reverse the neck pickup. And it goes. And that is a very nice usable. sinks in, you can do that to the bridge pickup. So, quickly let you hear the sounds. Full two humbuckers. Phase reverse the bridge humbucker. Phase reverse the neck humbucker. Phase reverse both humbuckers. There you really have a very kind of spanky. Not my thing, as you may tell. So all the sounds are there. Very, very usable. Lots of choice. And this was a real surprise how every sound in that was very, very usable. Anyway. Look at it, I'm not going to be sitting playing KC in the Sunshine Band. Let's go to the noisy stuff. So... <laughs> into a Soldano type circuit, into some vintage 30s, and yeah, there you go. Add a bit of boost onto that, it's even better. But uh, we have to watch what we play, because I'm sitting about half a metre off that speaker cabinet, so feedback can be a little bit of an issue with that. So, bridge pickup, neck pickup, I'll go through all the sounds for you. Bridge. <laughs> sound and split it down and this is where sometimes for some rhythm playing it works really nice just to sink it down a bit get rid of some of that low end it just makes it a little bit spankier a little bit brighter <laughs> copyright struck. So having that versatility just thins out the sound. Middle setting not usually one you use with a lot of gain. However <laughs> Bit 
too much low end there, not a problem. Coil split, phase reverse. The neck pickup, and that sound thins out. Still maybe too much low end, you're playing a gig and you found it's a very boomy room. Pop out the bridge humbucker and make it phase reverse too. And <laughs> Thins it out, just lets it cut through. <clears throat> neck, full neck sound. Back that off, and we've got quite a bit of gain with the Jet City going. harmonics on the neck pickup with <laughs> experience of playing live. They have to work. You have to be able to make sure it's going to stay in tune pretty much all gig if possible. Maybe halfway through you get to have a couple of minutes while somebody's talking and you can have a quick check of your tuning but I've never had to retune. Um, so let's go for an obscene amount to gain and I'll play you out with some general riffage. I think we'll maybe do some some motley crew. finishes however the tiger's the best one thank you very much and i'll have something for you again very very soon bye bye <laughs>